A lot of college students and grads think they don't have a ton of experience and they don't want to advertise that on LinkedIn or they're not really sure how LinkedIn works so it must not be that important. And I want you to know now that neither of these things is true. And by the end of this video, you will know how to use LinkedIn to build a quality network, build your brand, and land your first job. For the best college and career advice, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every Monday. Now, not only is LinkedIn a great social networking tool like Facebook, but I also personally love it because the jobs board on LinkedIn tends to be a lot more reliable and frankly less spammy than on places like Indeed where you'll see just so many fake job postings or you know postings for jobs that are no longer active and things like that. So really, really use the job section of LinkedIn if you're currently in the midst of a job search. I personally have used these strategies to land three internships during undergrad and then my first two jobs fresh out of college. Now, as a college coach, I help my students polish their LinkedIn profiles so that they can land more jobs and attract more recruiters. Let's get right into it. All right, this right here is my profile. I'm just gonna walk you through the different parts kind of step by step. So underneath this header right here, you'll see the about section. A lot of people, they also use the word summary to describe the section. So just remember that the about section, the summary is the same thing. And the about section can be kind of intimidating for a lot of people because it's basically this unstructured blank space. And you can use the exact same template that I have right here. Of course, uh, you'll wanna fill it in with your own information, your own skills. But here's the structure that I have for my about section. In the beginning, I have a very broad sort of mission statement or philosophy, not really targeting any specific jobs or positions yet, just introducing myself, what I'm passionate about. And then in the second part right here, this is where I get kind of into my areas of expertise, my experience, my current role, and then my target field or the type of jobs that I'm pursuing. If you're currently a student and you don't have a ton of experience uh, in terms of professional jobs or internships, this is a perfect place to just summarize the different classes that you found interesting in your major, maybe different projects that you've done or extracurricular involvement, um, like student orgs you're involved in or different leadership positions that you have. So that is where you would put that. Um, I also want to note that I'm writing it in the first person. I just personally think that that sounds better, but some people, they use the third person in their summary. Underneath that, you'll see some tools and skills. Once again, pretty straightforward, but this is really where the meat of it is and you want your passion to really shine through in your about section. I've also seen some people include some of their hobbies or less just strictly professional information. That is also perfectly fine because it lets the reader know that you're a human being and it establishes a connection with them as well. All right, down here you'll see the featured section. This is actually really, really new. LinkedIn just added this about a month or two ago. And if you have a website, this is a great place to put the website. You can see I've put my most recent video here any posts that you've made that you really want to highlight that show who you are, anything you want to share. So this is a really great space to just show off your projects and really make a good first impression in terms of the things that you've actually accomplished. All right, this is just the dashboard. Obviously I can only see it, but the only thing I want to touch on right here is the all-star status. I'm going to be talking a little bit more in this video about what that means and why you want it and how you can get it. But basically all-star status allows you to show up more in search. It uh, makes it so that your posts have more reach on LinkedIn. And in general, it'll just make your profile a little bit more powerful. So I'm going to walk you through the steps to getting that status later. Later in this video, I'll talk about networking. So your activity section here will be popping. Okay, now the experience section. This is kind of the main part or the resume portion of LinkedIn. A lot of students, they ask me how they should organize their different experiences. So you can see over here, there's volunteer and then there's also just general experience, which is kind of like work experience. 
If you have involvement in student orgs, for example, you can honestly put it in either section. So the professional experience section is generally more for paid experiences or internships, things like that. But if you don't have a ton of work experience, you can definitely, definitely, definitely put your student org involvement and leadership up here. Now, when it comes to actually describing it, which is another thing that I think produces a lot of anxiety, you'll see here that I prefer to stick with the first person because I think it adds a very conversational tone. I like to write everything out in full sentences just because this, while it kind of resembles your resume, is almost like a cover letter because it gives the reader a really in-depth sense of what you did and what you accomplished there. So that's why I like to use full sentences and I always try to highlight accomplishments with numbers. You don't just want to write out the task that you performed or like the list of duties that would be on the job description. You want to highlight the exact thing that you brought to the table, your result. So you see here, my students, when I was teaching over the summer, they gained an average of 20 percentage points between the pre-test and the post-test with a pass rate of 100%. So you want to quantify your results, use numbers as much as possible, because once again, it gives the reader a very clear, specific image of what you were able to accomplish. Make sure you have at least five skills, but honestly, you can easily put in 10 because a lot of these skills I have are pretty general communication, Microsoft, Adobe, Google. It's pretty easy to just add a new skill right here. Now back to the top, I just want to take a little bit of time to talk about exactly what all-star status is and the eight things that you need to check off in order to achieve all-star status. And the eight things are a professional profile photo. You don't really need a professional camera or anything like that. Using your phone is perfectly fine. I would just suggest not using the selfie camera and either getting somebody else to take the photo of you or setting up your camera somewhere, using a timer. You know how to do it. The headline is also really important for achieving that all-star status. Most people, if they're currently employed, they kind of just use their position and their company or organization in their headline. And while that's perfectly fine, if you're also searching for a job and using LinkedIn for your job search, maybe if you're not currently employed, the headline is really, really the place where you need to stand out. And by this, I mean, if I was looking for a job right now and I currently was not employed, I would make my headline the three target roles that I want to apply for. So for example, my headline could say something like um, academic advisor, financial aid officer, student support staff. And the reason you want to do this is because when recruiters are searching in LinkedIn, they're not searching for people who are currently open to new positions or typing in something vague, like searching for a new job. They're typing in the types of positions that they're targeting. So if you put that in your headline, you're gonna be one of the first people who show up and hopefully if your profile is set up and you have all-star status, they're gonna wanna reach out to you. Next is your summary or your about section. You'll wanna have that done. The industry or location should be filled out and I'll show you how to do that in here. If you hit the pencil and then scroll down, your industry is at the very bottom. You can kind of choose out of a whole list. And then your location, obviously, uh, you wanna display that. After that, you'll wanna go down and have at least three positions on here. In order to get all-star status, you need to include your current position and then two prior positions. Now, if you are currently unemployed and looking for a job, you might be thinking, how am I gonna have a current position? That would just be a lie, right? Not necessarily, because what I've seen a lot of people do and what I honestly suggest you do if you're in that position is to create a new current position for yourself. Now, if you watched my previous video, you already kind of heard this tip about how you should be working on a project or 
um, something to really show that you're developing yourself aside from just applying to jobs. So if you're working on that project, of course, that would be a perfect current experience for you to have. But honestly, you could just put what your target position is in this experience. So for an example, I could put recruiter. Okay, once you have your current position and then your two prior positions listed on here, to get all-star status, you just need some kind of education. You need five skills. And then you also need 50 connections. Now I'm going to pivot into networking and how you can get those first 50 connections if you haven't already. When it comes to networking, your first goal should be to land 50 connections because as we already talked about, that all-star status is what really enables you to get noticed in search and also have your posts be boosted by LinkedIn's algorithm. If you don't already have 50 connections, here are some ideas of people that you can add on LinkedIn. Your classmates, your friends, your coworkers, your supervisors, whether these be your old supervisors or your current ones, your professors, and even administrators from your school. These are all great people, and especially the last two are more likely to be active on LinkedIn. After you've added all these people, I suggest looking for second degree connections. On LinkedIn, there are three degrees of connections. First degree are people who are directly in your network, you've added them. Second degree means you have a lot of friends in common, mutuals. And third degree means that you might have a friend of a friend who knows them, or they're in your same industry and you're kind of in each other's peripheral. It helps to personalize your invitation with a note, especially if you don't really know the person that well, but I kind of view that as optional. Again, it depends on your personal style and whether or not you are really seeking that connection. Now, this is possibly one of the most important networking tips that I'm gonna give you about LinkedIn. When you're first starting out, especially as a college student, you're not really likely to know a ton of people who are super active on LinkedIn all the time, every day, every week. However, you do wanna incentivize yourself and motivate yourself to get on LinkedIn because that's the way you're gonna be constantly fine tuning your profile, creating posts regularly, engaging. So if you don't know a lot of people, I strongly recommend following some accounts who churn out amazing content when it comes to the job search or just professional development in general. Some of my personal favorites are Austin Belchak, Christy Bonner, and Bridget Hyacinth, I hope I'm pronouncing her name right, are three amazing people who produce tons of great content on LinkedIn. And just by following people like that, you can get so much more engagement on your feed. The final step of networking on LinkedIn after you've added everyone and you've added some people to your feed to really inspire you and motivate you is to get started on interacting. You want to like posts in your feed. You want to create comments that not just congratulate people on good news, although of course you want to do that as well, but also to show the way that you think and that are a little bit more in depth. So if somebody that you follow posts an article, you can read it, respond to it, maybe highlight a few great points, bring up a question, and that will definitely increase the amount of engagement on that post. When it comes to creating your own posts on LinkedIn, you have so many opportunities because like I mentioned in my other video about job searching in 2020 as a college grad, there really is not a ton of content on LinkedIn. It's mostly people setting up their profiles and then scrolling. So if you can create a post and even create multiple posts throughout the course of the week, it really will get a lot more views than you think it will. As you can see here, I made this post about a week ago. It was actually the post that inspired my first video and it already has 800 something views in the feed. I only have 100 or so people in my network, so if I can do it, so can you. Aside from sharing your own news, like your new graduation or um, maybe a new position that you've had, you can also do some self-reflection on there. You can promote a friend. You can even share something that you've learned. This will provide a lot of value to the people who follow you on LinkedIn. And as your post goes around and gets spread, people that you don't even know will request to follow you. I've seen this happen firsthand. Comment below if you have any questions about how to use LinkedIn or what your biggest struggle is during the job search process. If you found this video helpful, 
please give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who you think could benefit. Next week, I'm going to be spilling the tea on what makes or breaks college success. So be sure to subscribe if you want to get that when it comes out. And I'll see you then.